Welcome everybody. I'm Rowan Crockett, Grower Services Manager for our Northern Region. I'll be your host for this webinar, which is being held in place of physical grower meetings for our Canamble, Galar, Armatree, Gilgandra, Tommingley West and Peak Hill sites. 2020 has certainly already been a big year for everyone. And while a lot of things haven't gone to plan this year, one positive has been the return of some decent rainfall to our region. As a result, we find ourselves on the doorstep of what looks like being the best harvest for a number of seasons. While it's an exciting time for the industry, it's all, there is also a lot riding on this crop and we're not underestimating the importance of getting it off and into the bin to generate some badly needed cash flow for rural communities. This afternoon, you will hear updates on a variety of topics around delivering safely to your grain corp site this harvest. No doubt some of the topics discussed will lead to further questions. And you've probably noticed by now, the session is equipped with a chat feature on the right-hand side of your screen. You're more than welcome to put forward questions at any time. And we've left some time open at the end of the webinar to answer your questions, which are not covered off during the presentation. If, if you do have a question, please fire away at any time. And if we don't get time to answer it at the end, an appropriate person will call you following the webinar to, to discuss your, your question or concern. Given it's a busy time of year, I'll aim to wrap up in under an hour, so please understand that we may not be able to drill down into too much site-specific detail, but we'll do our best to give a, a broad overview of what's happening in the region. To kick off our presentations this afternoon, it gives me great pleasure to introduce Sean Barker, our General Manager of Customer and Commercial, to say a few words. Afternoon, Sean. Over to you. Afternoon, Rowan, and it's uh, my pleasure to be here today. To all the growers on the line, I'd like to thank you for taking the time to log in. Um, as Rowan mentioned, uh, 2020 has been a challenging year and um, for us needing to adapt in how we get our messages out to you. So uh, we're very pleased you could log on to this webinar today. Um, after a number of years of drought, um, we're very much um, looking forward to the harvest ahead um, and building um, on what we've been working on as a number of years in Grain Corp to providing a, a safe and efficient service for you, the grower. Um, we'll go through a number of those elements today and I'll leave that to uh, Luke, uh, Jamie and Mitch to do that, but there are a couple of points I just wanted to highlight before handing over. At Grain Corp, we've been busy in the last 12 months uh, demerging from our malt business. So our malt business now trades as a separate listed company on the ASX. And what that means for us as Grain Corp now, we have a very strong balance sheet with minimal core debt um, and allows us to focus back into our core a little bit more around grains and oilseed, which we're very excited about. We have a new CEO in Robert Spurway, and Robert started four days before the borders locked uh, in Australia and, and the pandemic uh, really came down on us. But Robert's done a really good job in connecting across the business and even getting out and meeting many of you, the growers, across New South Wales. Um, he's very much looking forward over the harvest period to getting out further, uh, as am I, and, and we all look forward to that happening. Um, with harvest um, preppiness for us as grain crop, it really started back in March. After the drought, we knew it was going to be a lot of hard work in getting things up and running again. We really focused in on the labour element and the machinery element um, for the business. So to date, we've had over 5,000 casual applications. Uh, Jamie will run through that in a little bit more detail. And we've also invested a lot in, uh, in tarts, uh, in new dogs and stackers across the network overall. As we've been doing that, uh, it's been in the backdrop of COVID. And we've had to change our plans. Uh, I can say I'm really proud of our staff and how we've adapted through that. But the one thing that hasn't changed is we needed to ensure we had a safe and efficient site operations for the harvest ahead. That meant we've had to make some changes to how deliveries will work. Uh, the team will run through that with you. In making those changes, we're hoping it not only will it be safe, but lead to a more efficient site overall. Um, our digital platforms will play a critical role in delivering on those services um, and we look forward to Crop Connect um, being an integral part of that and also our Fastway um, service and speeding up our sites and turnaround overall. So Rowan, on behalf of everyone at Grain Corp, I'd like to thank all growers um, for logging on today. I just reiterate any questions you may have, please use that uh, chat function there and, and logging them all. 
and I wish everyone a safe and a prosperous harvest ahead. So thank you. Thanks, Sean. Appreciate your words and, and look forward to seeing yourself and Robert out in the region over the, the next couple of months. I think it's going to be a, a very exciting time. As I mentioned earlier, 2020 has certainly been a year of surprises, and I'm certain all would agree COVID-19 has been the biggest of them all. At GrainCorp, we're certainly taking the COVID situation very seriously, and I'd now like to welcome our next guest, Luke Vanderworth, Regional Operations Manager for Northern New South Wales, to share with us his team's plan to ensure that our customers and staff remain safe this harvest and our sites remain open for deliveries. Welcome, Luke. Thanks, Ron. Good afternoon, all. Um, the COVID for, for Grain Corp, we've probably been working in this space already for the last six months. Um, as many would be aware, we did have a, a, a drought um, within the region and the area, and there's a, a significant large um, domestic program we had in place. So places that you would be familiar with, like Park Sub, uh, Werris Creek and Moray Sub, had large numbers and large volumes of outload trucks um, every day. Um, so from day one of COVID, we've had to change our systems at that site to, to minimise um, people stand and in Weybridge and to comply with COVID safe rules. So our fast way system has worked and operated in that. So we're, we're pretty used to operating with COVID at our sites um, and it's worked extremely well. Um, there is some changes, um, as Sean did say, and, and probably the largest one <clears throat> which will be <clears throat> which will affect the growers at, at harvest is, is that we're no longer we'll be able to allow um, growers or truck drivers in our sample stands or way bridges. Um, this is just there to ensure that we minimise contact um, between our staff and any visitors and, and make sure that the site can run um, through harvest because we don't want to have an incident on site where we, we may have to um, close down. Um, there's a couple other ways we're going to protect you and um, our staff whilst on site and one of them is through contract tracing, um, which a lot of you would have seen if you've been going in and around towns, um, we're going to adopt the um, QR scanning process, which you might have seen at a club or a pub where you pull up and you take a picture of a QR um, code. A uh, couple of seconds it takes you, probably about a minute, um, your first time to upload your detail. Um, and then every time after that, it's only about 20 seconds um, to go through and, and click on and click off. We'll have QR scanners set up around the site's um, multiple locations um, for those that don't have a smartphone, it still will be a manual process um, for us to, to track and, and contract trace who has been on our sites during harvest. Um, so that that's that contract tracing element. Um, we've also um, implemented the use of um, delivery advice forms, um, which are, are in an A4 pa bit of paper or a, a Word document. Um, for any deliveries that come into the site, um, there must be a grow delivery advice form, and that'll have the details like... Um, uh, grade, sample, um, chemical, MRLs, um, anything that's been applied to it. Um, and that will also have all the detail. That will be passed to the, the, the sample stand um, and all the detail then will be entered and then the truck can proceed from there. If you're um, doing grower samples for moisture and test weight and all that, again, we'll be asking that everyone um, brings their samples in a Ziploc bag with the, the grower delivery advice form completed um, in that and it's just handed into the sample stand and they will attend to that as quick as possible and they will get back to you as soon as possible with the results. Again, all this is just in place because um, a lot of you are aware there's not much room on our sample stands at the front of the birdcage. Um, again, we've got social distancing rules, 1.5 to a herd two. And again, it's about making sure that the whole harvest um, is safe um, and that we don't have any, any contact between our staff, just minimising contact between growers, staff and visitors. Um, the other change that you'll see, again, this is just put in place at the Weybridge, and this is, again, to, to, to minimise interaction between visitors and staff. Um, we'll, there will be no more cash or transfer of grain at Weybridge. Um, it will all immediately now go straight into warehouse, um, and then you can either transfer via Crop Connect or you can call the grow hotline and do it manually that way over the phone. Um, and then the... The fourth and the last part of the what are we doing to keep you and our people safe during harvest is uh, no transfer of clipboard at the hopper. So as the truck leaves the Weybridge, it will then proceed to the hopper. Um, we've done a bit of an adjustment to the font on the docket, so the grade and location is large. Um, the driver will just show the team that, um, the top attendant, and he will just check it visually, and then the truck will unload and they will proceed from there. So... 
that's basically our COVID plan, I suppose, for each site. Every site across the East Coast will be implementing these rules. Um, and, again, it's just to ensure that we have this safe process and that we are following COVID rules and protecting everybody through this half period. Thanks, Rowan. That's about it from me. Um, Lisa, got any questions? Yeah, thanks, Luke. Um, no, it all seems reasonably simple and, and practical from, from where I can see. Uh, I guess um, first question would be, do you have a view on whether it'll, uh, it'll slow down truck turnaround times at all? No, I, I'm pretty confident I think it will speed it up because we do see that we do usually get a, a few truck drivers congregating around the, the sample stand um, and also a lot of wrong information, um, incorrect information, guys that to call up the farm, find out what variety. Um, with the grower um, uh, declaration with our updated delivery advice form, all that information should be pre-populated, should be all entered. Um, by the time, the, if we can pass it up to the sample stand, by the time the driver gets to the sample stand, most of the detail will be entered. So if anything, I can see it streamlining the process. Um, and again, at the Wayridge, uh, cash and contract, wrong wrong contract numbers, what cash do I go to? That slows down that whole process again. Um, it should be, I could see it being extremely quick. Very good. Thanks, Luke. Might be a, a few, few uh, unintended efficiency gains then by the, the sound of it. Look, I've got a couple of other questions I was going to put to you. These are probably, and, and some of these points you've maybe mentioned, but, but just to dispel a few rumours that, that have been floating around. First one is, is uh, will drivers be allowed out of the truck? And, and if not, will Grain Corp staff be rolling tarps and, and cracking tailgates this harvest? Um, nothing's changed in that area, mate. The, the truck driver still will be obliged to unroll these tarps. He will still be operating his tailgate, we won't be going anywhere near the trucks, um, that rule, the process will stay the same. Sounds good. Uh, I guess the other one, there, there's certainly been some uh, some thought that maybe Grain Corp wouldn't be welcoming growers to, to bring in samples pre-delivery this year. Is that the case? Uh, um, no, it's still fine to do. we just got to follow the, the, the process we've got in place, and that is the Ziploc bag with the grower delivery advice form completed, filled out with all the details and contact details. So we can get back. So still same, just a few other steps in place. Yeah. And uh, will, will my truck still get a delivery docket as they, they tear off the way bridge? Yeah, they will. They'll still get the, the one docket. If they require another docket, we can do a reprint and print two dockets off if it's if required. They'll still have all their paperwork. Great. And and I guess the, the final one you mentioned about each load needing a delivery advice, what will what will happen if, if my, uh, my truck turns up without a delivery advice? Look, we're setting the sites up to have um, plenty of copies available. Um, all we ask is if a driver does identify that he's in the line and he um, hasn't got it, that he pulls over to the side, um, can either pull up at the way bridge or the SAMP stand, um, come in, get a couple of couple of, of the delivery advice dockets, fill them out, and again proceed through because um, we don't want to have people congregating around the way bridge, way bridge or SAMP stand filling out this paperwork whilst trucks are trying to pro be processed. Great. Thanks, Luke. That's, uh, that's it for me. Um, appreciate your time and, and uh, sounds like there's been some really good work there done to, to make sure we're all safe and, and open for business. Uh, our next guest this afternoon is uh, our area manager for, for the Dubbo North uh, region. Uh, Jamie Zell is joining us. Um, good afternoon, Jamie. Welcome. Thanks, Ron. Good to be here. Jamie, I understand it's it's been a, a busy time uh, for you and your team getting ready for harvest. Can you just give us a bit of a feel for, for what you've been up to and, and also what uh, how things are going to look when, when growers turn up to their local site this year? Yeah, we have been fairly busy getting things ready, Ron. We haven't been playing around with much grain, but um, the sites are looking good. We've got most of our preparation done. Tarps are in place, stackers are coming in, and we we should be ready to go when harvest rolls around. Um, for my spiel, I'd like to focus on the commodities we're taking at each site, our operating hours, um, site managers, the number of delivery points per site, recruiting, uh, touch on communications and grain harvest management scheme and what configuration of truck we can legally receive into each site. So I thought I'd start at the northern end of the area of Canamble and finish in the south with Peak Hill. So for Canamble this year, Ken Irwin, our long-standing manager, is on an extended period of leave. He won't be there for harvest. 
Um, we have Mitchell James as the manager. Mitch has had three way, three years away from the company. But prior to that, he, he ran Moree, um, so he certainly knows what a large site looks like at harvest time. Um, we do have Barry McIntyre, who would be well known by our Canamble growers, in as the assistant site manager's position. We will take wheat and barley at Canamble. We're gearing up for 24 hours of operation, as we do in a, in a big year at Canamble. Our recruiting is going very well, and we will have enough staff to comfortably cover two shifts. As far as delivery points go, we'll have a minimum of two, possibly three, for feed barley. Uh, we have nine for wheat, which will be two more than 2016, with basically every wheat bunker potentially being operational at one time on the site. So yeah, a bit of firepower at Canamble. We know how big it's going to be, and hopefully we're prepared as, as well as we can be for it. Um, we also have a rail overflow strategy in place, ready to go from the start of harvest, which should allow the site to continue to receive grain deep into the harvest period. Our new rail bins are for three years in the making. have had their first run today with a train, train being loaded for Manildra and we've got another two planned for outload prior to harvest to iron out any teething problems we might find along the way. Um, at Galar, the site supervisor is Mackie Noonan and we're recruiting for a site manager to replace Gary Ferguson who resigned about five weeks ago. Um, as usual, Galar will be a wheat only site. Again, our harvest recruiting's gone very well. We'll have enough staff to run two shifts working in and up working into an 18-hour day as required. Uh, we'll have the usual five drop-off points with a portable stacker on the rail bunker. The last of the grain left the site last week, so we're empty and cleaned down and ready to go at the lark. Uh, moving down to Armatree, which will operate this year after a, a bit of a lull, um, Lorraine Anforth will again manage the site, taking wheat only, up to 14 hours, 14 hours per day operation on one shift with the normal three delivery points in operation. Um, Armatree Arm will be a manual sampling site, so Fastway won't be in operation. However, that won't impact on the growers' ability to get their loads optimised if they're eligible to be upgraded. Gil Gandra, Mick Calton back as a site manager, and he has a new assistant site manager in Peter Harland, due to Andrew Scrappy Gorman taking on the site manager's job in Warwick Nabil in Victoria. Uh, Gil will take canola, wheat, feed and more barley this year. We'll have three segs of malt, um, being Spartax into the BS shed, and Commander and Latrobe into the silos on Warren Road. This is going to be Gill's real first real workout since we acquired the southern side in 2016 from Cargill, and we've given plenty of thought over the last six months as to how to, the combined sites will operate best. Uh, the northern sample stand will be the main stand for, for harvest, with the southern stand opening for three hours each morning to clear the line. By only operating one stand for the majority of the day, we reckon we can improve the turnaround times for you by controlling the traffic flows better. There won't be as much two-way traffic up and down that new link road that goes through the state forest, and we should be able to keep the grain flowing better through all the delivery points and give us a bit more control on, on where the trucks are flowing. And obviously both way bridges will operate all the time. Um, we'll have two delivery points for both the canola and the feed barley early on, one of each of them at either bunker compound. Similarly for the wheat, uh, there'll be two drop points for each grade, except for APH2 with a total of four portable stackers on site, plus the fixed belt ser system servicing the two bunkers at the southern site, along with the two very good permanent storage we have on the northern site. Again, recruiting's going well, and we'll have enough staff to cover two shifts for an 18-hour operating day as required. Thanks, Ellie. Fantastic to hear. Sounds like you've got the the people, the plans and, and the gear in place and, and are ready to go, which is great to hear. What about uh, in the, the southern half of your region, Narromine, Swimmingly West and, and Peak Hill, how are you looking down there? Yeah, pretty similar. We're making pretty good progress leading into harvest. Um, over at Narromine, we've got Stacey Irvine again as the site manager. He'll be assisted by Brendan Moore as the second shift manager. Stacey's been very active, active close to home on the recruiting front. He's basically got a completely local team for harvest, which is great uh, news for the local community. Narromine will be wheat only, again, with five delivery points in operation, including two portable stackers. Uh, one of those will be set up on the dirt wall bunker that we don't really kick into unless it's a big year. Uh, that'll be set up long ways on the bunker floor, meaning it will only be accessible by those trucks that can reverse and dump into the hopper. However, this does give us another dump point and an extra 30,000 tonnes capacity for the site. So like Galar and Gill, we'll have enough staff to run two shifts, so we'll be able to push out to 18 hours as required at the peak. Uh, down at Tamingley West, Corey Honberg, one of our permanent pest control team members, will be running the site. This site will be feed barley only. 
uh, we'll only be operating the shed, not the small capacity silos. It will be one shift and up to run up to about 14 hours per day at the peak. And then down to Peak Hill, uh, Mick Dean, we're well known to the Peak Hill growers, will be managing, managing the site again. Peak Hill will be wheat only, uh, with only one shift in operation, working up to a 15 hour day where required. We do have two portable stackers lined up for the two bunkers, along with the two permanent storage. So four delivery points in total. Um, we realise we have some issues there at the moment due to the inland rail work adjacent to the site that's gone on in the last six to 12 months. So we're working with ARTC to rectify those issues as soon as possible prior to harvest. Thanks, Ellie. Um, look, more of a, I guess, a, a general question, this one. Uh, the, the Grain Harvest Management Scheme, are there any changes there that growers need to be aware of? I guess the change is, Rowan, for us, is the way we interface with the Grain Harvest Management Scheme. It has changed our growers, remember, back in 2016. Um, in a nutshell, there'll be no holding bin for those tonnes that a truck delivers over his 5% um, Grain Harvest Management Scheme tolerance if they're an eligible truck type and there's no three strikes and you're out of the scheme. Um, now Grain Corp will accept the entire load. They'll issue a warning letter at the point of delivery and we'll also send an email to the registered email address for that particular NGR, notifying them of the overload. Um, just keep in mind that our records are open to the RMS for inspection at any time. So if there are overloaded trucks in the system, then they could be liable to scrutiny from the, from the RMS. Just touching on truck configurations that are legal into our sites for my area, all sites except Tomingley West are okay to receive road trains and all sites except for Tomingley West and Peak Hill can receive AB triples. So things are opening up pretty well on a, on a truck run as well. Great. Thanks, Jamie. Look, just one final one from me and, and that's around communication, which is, is obviously going to be key to, to being ready and... and uh, and servicing growers at, at harvest. Can you just give us a bit of a feel for, for I guess, what you'd like to hear from, from growers to help your team, both leading into and, and during the harvest period, and, and just a bit of an insight into how you'll be communicating key information back to growers during that, that harvest window as well, please? Yep, sure. Um, well, communication's exactly that. It's a two-way street. Um, the better we communicate to, to our growers, the better we're gonna, job we're going to do. So, yeah, it's a better outcome for both the growers and, and us when we communicate better. We will be utilising our Tim's messaging tool to get text messages out to growers that we have done in the past. So I'd encourage everyone to, to get onto that system and um, be locked in before harvest starts so you're getting our daily updates where required. Uh, that'll be site specific so you can lock, lock into a certain site and get that site information. Um, obviously we're open to phone calls, um, myself and my team, the managers, yeah, happy to take phone calls at any time to sort through things to make, it, to make it a better experience for all of us. We would appreciate a few days notice at the start of harvest when we're just getting going for each commodity. Um, so we can make sure we're ready when that first truck rolls in. There's nothing like having a couple of days notice just to, to put us on, on notice that it's about to start. Apart from that, it's great to get feedback along the way on, on how far through you are, as it helps us build a, a bigger picture overall and um, sets our hours of operation correctly our RA programs and our staffing numbers as well. Um, just as a bit of a wrap, Rowan, I'd like to close by saying I know how important this harvest result is to you all and my team and I will be trying to best, our best to make it as successful as possible. If you do have any queries along the way, please give me a call or give the site manager a call and we'll um, answer it the best we can. And just closing, I'd, I'd just like to ask that you appreciate our task in bringing on our new casuals. Um, it's been three years since we've seen a a casual in my neck of the woods, so yeah, not employing any anyone that long. It's we're all going to be a bit rusty to begin with, but I'm sure we're going to get there after the first four or five days, and yeah, look forward to a good dry harvest period. Thank you. Great, thanks, Jamie. Look, just while I've got you, uh, I have got one question from from the audience, which I will put to you while you're here, and that's whether Canamble will have any malt segregations. No, no malt segs. We, we haven't run malt segs at Canamble for forever, actually. I think it was Kambara was the last time we took malt segs up that way. So, yeah, unfortunately, if um, you've got malt, you'll have to run it down to Gilgandra. Very good. Thanks, Jamie, and, and uh, yeah, appreciate your, your update and, and good luck to you and the team for, for uh, the couple of months ahead.
Uh, just before I, I do introduce our next guest, uh, we'll give you a reminder about the, the chat feature and, and please do send through those questions. Uh, the other one I, I will point out is we do have Matt Saman on the line. Matt's our, our quality assurance manager based up in Toowoomba for the, the northern region. Uh, he hasn't got a, a presentation for us today, but but he's certainly more than happy to answer any questions at the end from a, a quality perspective. So please shoot them through if there is anything there. Um, I'll now introduce our, our next guest, Mitch Wheaton, who's the grain marketer for, for our Dubbo North region. Welcome, Mitch. Hi, Rowan, and uh, good afternoon all to the growers, and thanks for jumping on today. Uh, Mitch, I guess to, to kick off, it's it's uh, been a while since some people have delivered to a to a grain corp site. Just wondered if you've got any pointers on on what people should get organised before they are uh, so they're ready to go for that that first load. You know, worries. Look, we've got a couple of um, points. Just just a bit of preparation as we head into harvest. Um, look, firstly, um, with regards to NGR details, um, strongly recommend that uh, any details that need to be updated, um, uh, you can you can do via NGR, um, particularly with any additional contacts within your business that may transact um, with with regards to uh, the grower hotline as, as well as Croptimizer. It, um, it will, will help uh, things flow at harvest um, with regards to that. The other one would be with Crop Connect logins. Um, if you're not familiar with the platform, Strongly recommend um, you get your login set up and check in with your logins that are working. Um, Crop Connect will be a, a central platform for growers this harvest to monitor their deliveries as well as, as transacting. Um, and there's been a number of features built into this platform in recent years. As Jamie touched on, uh, the site communications piece will be critical this harvest. Um, growers should have received uh, site-specific test messages in the last few weeks. If you haven't, I um, strongly recommend that you follow up with regards to your opt-in codes for sites. Um, another one was just for our Galar growers, um, just due to a few technical issues we've had with the site list there, uh, we'll, we'll send out the opt-in codes following this uh, on the information pack. Please um, opt-in for Galar if you wish to receive uh, updates at, at harvest. And finally, just with the delivery advice forms, as mentioned earlier, uh, will be requirement this harvest. So uh, copies are available on the website, but if you, you do need um, some copies or any questions answered, um, feel free to contact your local site manager. Um, if you need copies printed out or, um, yeah, if you need to pre-fill any, any of these forms pre-harvest, please, uh, yeah, ability just to help, help things uh, run smoothly at harvest. Great. Thanks, Mitch. Some really good tips there. Um, I guess you mentioned some new features in Crop Connect. Can you just elaborate a bit more on, on how to look when people log in if they haven't been in there for a while, what, what's new, what, what they should uh, know about in Crop Connect? Yeah, sure. There's been a number of functions uh, built in into the platform in recent years. So I guess one which will be very important this year is the ability to complete your title transfers to cash contract or pools. Very easy um, platform to complete those on, as well as the live marketplace. So growers will be able to access live bids, as well as place offers, uh, and it just gives growers the ability to transact um, via the platform. And also one that's been built in recently is the uh, accounting feature. It gives growers the ability to access the RCTIs, as well as storage invoicing, and uh, extract your delivery summaries for, for later review if, if needed. Great. Thanks, Mitch. That's uh, yeah, good tips there and, and certainly a great tool for, for people to, to engage at 24 hours with, with Grain Corp and, and monitor their dealings. Look, the, the next one I've got, it was mentioned earlier by, by Luke that loads will automatically default to warehousing this year in, in the Grain Corp system. Can you just give us a, a bit of an insight into to what warehousing at Grain Corp means for growers? Yes, that's right. No, I guess one, um, firstly, the, a, a great change this year has is, is been um, the ability for growers that they will receive the month of delivery plus two. So in previous, that's an additional month to previous seasons. So it just gives growers the ability, knowing that they are warehousing their grain, um, that you do have that, that period free storage on the first delivered NGR. The other one I'll just uh, touch on is 
is worthwhile while the grain is in warehouse just to remember your ability to crop to mise um, eligible loads and it gives you the opportunity while the grain is in warehouse to, uh, yeah, just uh, have, a, have a go to see if you do, you do have eligible loads there. Thanks, Mitch. Um, I guess, look, it's not a new product this season, but it's, it's been a while since people use Croptimizer or may, some may not be familiar with Croptimizer. Can you just give us a, a bit of an explanation on, on what Croptimizer is, why it adds, adds value, I guess? Yeah, definitely. Look, as, as Ron mentioned, the Croptimizer will be running this year, um, available to wheat, barley and durum. Um, look, to put it simply, Croptimizer gives growers the opportunity to extract some value in, in delivered equity. It's based on a three-point criteria. Um, I'll run through those, those points briefly. So grower um, will be required to have a grower quality equity, um, and by, by this means a grower needs to have built equity um, on loads they've delivered and with, as well as having a, via, um, a spread on grades at the same site. So that's the first point. Secondary, uh, the, the load does need to be eligible, so it needs to be within parameters of protein, test weight and screenings to, uh, to get the second tick. And finally, just the stack equity, this, so the site stack quality um, must allow for those eligible loads to, to be upgraded. So if all these line up, Growers will, will, which is a great feature building this year, um, for those registered mobiles on the NGR, um, there'll be set um, periods throughout the throughout the harvest whereby reminders will be set out, um, an SS, SMS reminder. So if you, you are receiving reminders, it just prompt growers to uh, worth worth touching in with uh, the grower hotline. So our, our 1-800-Grains hotline um, is your the grow hotline this harvest, so based out of Tamworth, we'll be able to uh, assist with with uh, features such as Croptimizer, but not limited to, as well as uh, Crop Connect um, details and assistance there. So feel free to uh, touch base and get familiar with the, the grower hotline number, which will hopefully help help things run smoothly for your harvest. Great, thanks. Um, I guess just one final one from me, and and that's around growers wishing. To, to find out a bit more about markets and, and selling their grain to, to Grain Corp. Who's the, the best contact there, Mitch? So uh, we've got myself, I, I cover um, the, the Dubbo North region, so we've got a team of markets based out of Tamworth. Um, so we've, our marketing line will be the best best line to which to um, contact us and that will be available on the information pack following the meeting. Um, look, we're here to assist in all, all pricing um, inquiries. Um, we're, fair, we're very excited about our ability to provide two-day payment terms this harvest. So Along with the payment terms, the live pricing will still be available on Crop Connect um, as a reference. So, it, we yeah look forward to be able to help where we can at harvest and uh, and feel free to, to sing out whether you've got any queries. But just finally closing, just wishing all growers a, a safe harvest and and look forward to into assisting where possible this harvest. Great, thanks, Mitch. Some great tips there. Appreciate your time. Uh, look, that's it for our, our presentations this afternoon. Um, we do have a little bit of time left for some questions, so I'll, uh, I'll just kick off uh, with probably the first one to, to Matt Simon, who's, who's on the line. Um, Matt, uh, someone's noticed that, that we do have a box on our grower delivery advice uh, for growers need to declare whether the, the, the crop's been sprayed in crop with glyphosate for for both barley and durum. Um, can you just explain why that is? Yeah, thanks, Rowan, and good afternoon, everyone. Yeah, our samplers will ask the grower or their representative whether glyphosate has been applied to the crop as a desiccant. If the load has been applied um, with glyphosate, then the maximum grade that that load can achieve will be BAR1. If the load did not have glyphosate applied, then it is eligible for a malting grade, obviously depending on the variety and the quality of results. With Durham, while there are MRLs for Durham, for glyphosate, there is a customer requirement that we are um, shipping out pesticide-free Durham. So we this enables us to be able to identify stock that's suitable for that export market. But realistically, Rowan, at the end of the day, all chemical applications need to be declared at the sample stand. Great. Thanks, Matt. Thanks. Makes good sense and, and certainly very important. I think it's something that's that's going to grow in importance rather than disappear, that's for sure. 
Um, look, I, I guess my next question that, that's come up, I'll probably put to you, Luke, um, and that is what, what happens if my local site fills this harvest? Uh, look, we're, we're very aware of the size of the crop, and that's East Coast actually is, is looking at a, at a great size crop. So we've been quite, quite lucky to be planning very early. Um, rails, one of the options, we've got the triggers to try and help us ensure that sites don't fill. Um, again, we're, we're throwing rail assets at sites where we think need um, overflow to ensure that we, we don't fill sites. Um, if they do fill, um, it might be the site down the road that is the better rail site where we can, can take more grain around out a lot quicker. So we may may not be your site, but it might be the site down a bit further that we can continue to, to empty out. Um, me and my team are working on a, a, a late delivery or post-harvest strategy as well. We do, do understand that there is a fair few bags out there that have been purchased this year and there will be grain sitting on farm and we'll have nominated depots around the region where you can deliver December, January if required. So that's our strategy, mate. Um, just got to protect a lot of silos and we're just when we come to it, we've got a plan in place. Great. Thanks, Luke. Uh, look, while I've while I've got you, Luke, I might give you this one as as well, um, and that is, uh, can we submit the the delivery advice forms electronically? Um, good question. No, we'll need them handed in with every single load. So as the truck turns up, you'll need a a new 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 bit of new delivery advice. Here it is. This is what this load is to refer to that individual load. Thanks, Luke. I guess I'd just add to that that we can send you a, a document that can be edited, so you could pre-populate most of your details, trading details, NGRs, varieties, et cetera, before you, you print them off, which, which should save a little bit of uh, filling out at, at harvest time. Uh, look, that's, that's the end of our, our questions for today and, and does conclude our webinar for this afternoon. Um, yeah, if you do have any anything pops into your mind after the the session and we'd certainly encourage you to reach out to the appropriate people with, with any questions. Uh, we will be sending out a full contact list of, of all the appropriate contacts for your region uh, in the next couple of days. So keep an eye out for that email and, and certainly please update your phone so you do have the, the up-to-date correct contacts there for the, the harvest period. Um, and I guess just final one from me is thanks very much, everyone, for attending. Really appreciate your time at, at a busy time, and, and we wish everyone a safe and, and trouble-free harvest. Thank you.